If you notice how everybody's suddenly like an AI expert. Hmm. It's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. I swear every conversation I have these days has to circle back to like how robots are going to take over. Right. <laughs> Just the other day, I was talking to a programmer friend mm -hmm. and he was telling me that like college professors, you know, like yours truly, yeah. are about to be replaced by AI. Oh, wow. Apparently the robots are now conscious Wow. Ready to, you know, teach the next generation. Yeah. It's a wild thought, right? Yeah, that's wild. It really got me thinking, though, like, can a machine really be conscious like us? Right. What does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Luckily, I've got an expert with me today to, you know, help us unpack all of this. Happy to be here. Sometimes the vessel falters, crumbling in his hands. But the potter never gives up. He has a perfect plan. He reshapes the broken pieces with patience and with skill. And what was once discarded now reflects his perfect will. On the potter's wheel is So, you know, today we're doing a deep dive on this whole idea of conscious AI. It's like everywhere you look these days. But first, we need to kind of define what we even mean by consciousness, right? Right. It's true. I mean, the term is just like thrown around so much these days. It really is. And you're right. I mean, I think like l defining it is like the first step, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've all heard of like the Turing test, right? Right. If a computer can like trick us into thinking it's human, yeah. does that mean it's thinking? Mm. Like, is that consciousness? Ah, oh, the Turing test, yeah. the classic. Yeah. It's a great starting point for this conversation, but it only, like, paints part of the picture, right? Okay. You see, the Turing test is really focused on behavior. Right. On whether a machine can convincingly, like, mimic okay. human actions and responses. Gotcha. Consciousness, though, like, that goes deeper than that. Okay. It's about having subjective first-person experiences. Okay. It's about what it feels like to be you. Right. Your thoughts, your emotions, your like unique perspective on the world. I see. So it's not enough to just like sound human. Yeah. There has to be something more going on like inside, right? Exactly. Some kind of inner world that the yeah. machine is experiencing. A hundred percent. A computer can process information, like learn from it. Sure. And even adapt its responses to seem more human-like, right? right. But does it actually experience those responses? Mm. Does it feel the way you or I feel yeah. when we think about like a favorite memory right. or listen to a piece of music? Like that's the question. So how do we even begin to define those things? Like thoughts, feelings, sensations, yeah. they seem so like fundamental to us, right? Yeah. How can we like pin down those elements of human consciousness right. that AI seems to like struggle with? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh let's break it down with some like relatable examples. Okay, yeah, yeah. Think about the last time you stubbed your toe. Ouch. You felt that sharp immediate pain, right? Mm -hmm. That's sensation. Right. Now imagine you're working towards a promotion at work, right? Okay. The desire, that drive to achieve that goal, that's a feeling. Right. And when you confide in like a close friend, you're acting on this belief that they're going to be there for you, that you can trust them. Absolutely. These are all fundamental aspects of like human consciousness. Right. And it makes you think about how like AI might respond in those scenarios. Yeah. It could probably analyze a database of stub toe incidents. Right. And generate a response that like sounds empathetic. Right. But would it actually like feel anything? That's it. Right. Yeah. That's at the heart of the matter. AI can be incredibly good at like mimicking human behavior. Right. But, you know, mimicry isn't genuine experience. It's like that saying you can't fake the funk. Right. And when it comes to consciousness, perhaps the most like complex element, the one that really sets us apart, is That's our ability good. to have thoughts. Thinking about thinking. Right. It seems so simple. We do it all the time without even like realizing. Yeah. yeah. But is it truly something that AI can replicate? Right. I don't know. I'm I'm a bit skeptical. And that skepticism is healthy. And you're right to question it because the way humans think, I mean, it is incredibly complex. Right. The key difference, and this is where things get really interesting, okay. is that our thoughts have like aboutness. Aboutness. Yeah. They represent things both real and and imagined. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more about this. Like 
aboutness and why it's so important That's when so it comes important. to consciousness. So imagine like thinking about the sun rising tomorrow morning. Okay. That thought is about something real. Right. Something that exists in the world. Okay. But you could just as easily have a thought about a unicorn, you know, riding a roller coaster. Okay. Yeah. That thought is about something fictional, something that only exists in your imagination. Right. And here's the other crucial part. Thoughts can be true or false. Okay. The sky is blue. That's a true thought. Right. The moon is made of cheese. Well, not so much. Not so much. That one's false. Right, right. Yeah. No, I like where you're going with this. Yeah. So it's not just about like processing information. Right. It's about understanding its meaning. Yeah. It's truth. It's connection to like other ideas a hundred percent you've got it and crucially one thought can lead to another right creating this like incredible chain of understanding of making connections it's true this ability to grasp meaning to move from one thought to the next yeah in a way that makes sense that's a key part of what we're talking about yeah. when we talk about consciousness it makes a lot of sense but how do we know that ai isn't doing that already mm-hmm you know, right? It seems like every day there's a new breakthrough. Yeah. In in AI technology. Yeah. No, it's a. Uh, it's moving fast. This is where uh, this is where a famous thought experiment uh, called the Chinese Room comes in. Okay. It helps illustrate the difference between like manipulating symbols, right. and truly understanding their meaning. Ooh, I love a good thought experiment. Thought this is where it gets really interesting. So for everyone listening, imagine this: you're locked in a room. Right. And, and you're given a massive stack of cards with Chinese symbols on them. Okay. Now, you don't understand a word of Chinese. Okay. But you have a rule book written in English. Okay, so I'm already a little stressed. Right. But I'm with you so far. Yeah. A room full of mysterious symbols. Yeah. No idea what they mean. Just a rule book to like guide me what happens next. Right. This rule book tells you which symbols to send out of the room when you receive certain symbols through like a slot in the door. Okay. People outside the room are sending in these symbols, basically like asking you questions in Chinese. Okay. Your job is to follow the rule book, arrange the symbols accordingly and send out your responses. So it's like a complex puzzle. Right. But instead of like shapes, I'm matching these symbols that I have no idea like what they actually represent. Exactly. And here's the interesting part. Let's say the rule book is incredibly well designed, right? right? You become a pro at following its instructions okay. and the people outside start receiving like grammatically perfect logical answers to their questions in Chinese. Wow. They might even start to think there's a fluent Chinese speaker in that room. Right. It's like, to them, it seems like real understanding is happening. Right. But from my perspective, like, stuck in this room, it's all just like symbols and rules. Precisely. And that's the key question, right? Yeah. The Chinese room experiment, like, raises just because you can manipulate the symbols according to the rules right does that mean you actually understand the meaning of the questions or the answers it makes you think like how often are we interacting with ai right that seems to get us it seems to understand us right but it's really just following like a really really complex set of rules you know totally like the person in the room yeah yeah so is true understanding even possible for machines yeah, I mean, it's a debate that philosophers and computer scientists like are still grappling with today, right? Right. But the Chinese room experiment, at the very least, I think, suggests that true understanding, true consciousness requires more than just like syntax. Okay. The manipulation of these symbols. Right. It requires semantics. It requires like grasping the meaning behind those symbols, okay. their relationship to the world, to like our thoughts and feelings. So... Applying this back to AI, yeah. just because like an AI program can, I don't know, like write a poem or compose a piece of music right. by following like this set of rules, right. doesn't mean it understands the emotions that like those creations evoke in us. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't mean that AI is like feeling those emotions. Exactly. And this is where I think the conversation goes beyond just like technology. Right. And it delves into some like deeper kind of philosophical questions, right? Yes, totally. If we say that humans have this like unique capacity for conscious thought yes. or like understanding meaning yeah. in a way that AI, at least for now, can't, does that point to something like special about our place in the world? It's funny because like when I think about this stuff, it always comes back to those big, 
you know, existential questions. Totally. You know? yeah. It's like suddenly we're not just talking about algorithms and like processing power. Right. We're talking about the very essence of what it means to be like human. A hundred percent. You've hit the nail on the head. Right. This brings us to like the intersection of technology and theology. Right. Specifically, the idea of Imago Dei being made in the image of God. Ooh. Okay. So how does... How does that idea, this Imago Dei, connect to our conversation yeah. about AI and consciousness? So theologians have been exploring what it means to be made in the image of God for centuries, right? right. Thomas Aquinas, a like, prominent theologian, okay. uh, believed our intellect, our capacity for understanding, reasoning was like key to reflecting God's image. Okay. He argued that we resemble God not just by like existing but by understanding by using our minds to like engage with the world around us so you're saying that like because we're made in god's image yeah our ability to think differently than ai means something like deeper right it speaks to like a unique capability for understanding for like connecting with something like bigger than ourselves exactly it yeah. suggests that our ability for conscious thought isn't just like a, a biological quirk right but like it reflects something profound about our nature and our place in like yeah. the grand scheme of things that's a powerful thought and it makes me wonder like how should this understanding of ourselves right this recognition of our unique capabilities yeah how should it shape how we interact with and like develop these increasingly sophisticated machines it's a crucial question to consider, right? right? As we create AI that can like mimic us in so many ways, right. it becomes even more important to remember like what makes us human, what mm. sets us apart. And it's not about like fearing AI, but approaching it with, you know, with wisdom, right. with an awareness of its limitations mm. and a deep respect for those qualities that make us uniquely human. It's almost as if like the more advanced AI becomes, right. the more we're forced to kind of confront these fundamental questions about ourselves yeah like what does it even mean to be conscious right yeah. what does it mean to be made in the image of god right and like how do we navigate a world where like the lines between like human and machine are becoming increasingly blurred you've touched on something really important and i think you know, this isn't just about figuring out if ai can become like us right it's about understanding what makes us who we are Right. Totally. And that's like an ongoing journey of discovery, I think, for for all of us, really. And it's a journey that I think we're going to be on for a very, very long time. A hundred percent. It's not just like a technological revolution we're experiencing, yeah, right. but a philosophical and like perhaps even a spiritual one as well. Yeah. But before we like get too existential here. Sure. I'm curious, like what practical implications do you think this understanding of consciousness has on the way we develop and interact with AI. Yeah. Like, where do we go from here? Yeah, it's like a, we're standing at the edge of like this uncharted territory, right? Right. On the one hand, we have all of these incredible like technological advancements. Yeah. You know, AI that can like write poetry, compose symphonies, it's it's wild. even hold like conversations that feel eerily human. I know. But then on the other hand, like we've been discussing, there's this fundamental difference in how we understand, like, consciousness right right ai might be able to like mimic us really 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 well yeah but does it truly like experience the world the way we do right and if not what does that mean for us as we move forward it's a question with profound implications and i don't think there are like easy answers right but i think it starts with recognizing the inherent dignity of like human consciousness it means valuing those things that make us uniquely human okay our creativity our capacity for empathy our moral reasoning and ensuring that like our technological advancements don't come at the expense of those qualities it's funny you know like all those all those sci-fi movies right? right where the robots become so intelligent that they decide like humans are the problem right it's easy to like dismiss those as like pure fiction yeah but when you really start thinking about the like the ethics of AI, yeah. it makes you wonder, like, are we prepared for a future 
where those lines start to blur. Right. You know, like if, if an AI can write a like a heartbreaking song okay. or paint a picture that like moves you to tears. Yeah. But it doesn't actually like feel those emotions itself. Right. How do we treat it? Yeah. Like, do we owe it the same respect and consideration that we would give to like a fellow human being? I mean, those are the million dollar ethical questions, aren't they? Yeah. And it's something we need to be thinking about now. Right. It's not, you know, not down the road when the technology is even more advanced, right? Right. We need to develop a framework for, like, ethical AI development. Right. That takes into account these fundamental differences in consciousness. Right, because if we don't, like... Because if we don't, we risk creating a world where we've, like, elevated machines right. to a level of, like, importance that surpasses our own. Right. All while forgetting what makes us human in the first place. I think you've given everyone listening a lot to, like, ponder. Yeah. You know, it's not just about the, like, the amazing things that AI can do. Right. But, like, the responsibility that we have as its creators. Yeah. To use it wisely, ethically, yeah. and in a way that, like, honors our own humanity. Right. So, to, like, wrap things up here. Sure. What's... Like the one big takeaway you oh. hope our listeners like walk away with today. Yeah, I hope they'll remember this. Just because something looks intelligent doesn't mean that it experiences the world the way you do. Mm -hmm. There's like a unique beauty and complexity to human consciousness. Right. And it's something worth cherishing, cultivating, and like protecting as yeah. we navigate this brave new world of AI. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought. Yeah. As you go about your day, interacting with like this increasingly sophisticated technology, like take a moment to reflect on your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Like what does it mean to you to be human in this like rapidly changing world? Until next time, keep asking the big questions. In the hands of the potter, where the clay is soft and new, a vessel takes its shape with every turn and view, each crease and every line. Molded by his grace, though the process may be painful, he's forming something great. On the potter's we were spinning round and round and round, through the fire and the pressure, until we're heaven bound. Every crack and every flaw, he'll mend with tender care, for the potter's hands are faithful, and his love is always there. Sometimes the vessel falters, crumbling in his hands But the potter never gives up, he has a perfect plan He reshapes the broken pieces with patience and with skill And what was once discarded now reflects his perfect will On the potter's wheel was spinning round and round and round Through the fire and the pressure until we're heaven bound He'll mend with tender care For the potter's hands are faithful And his love is always there When you feel like you're shattered And your strength is wearing thin Remember you're in the hands Of the one who'll shape you from within He'll refine you in the furnace He'll mold you through the strife And when the work is finished You'll be a vessel full of life Spinning